Hi everybody, Carissa here with Inky Fairy Designs for the Blitzy Creative Team today and I'm going to be doing some water coloring. We're going to be working on this piece. It's on canvas, just doing some loose florals and I'm showing you a trick to getting the silhouette on here. Um, so like I said, I'm working with the Daniel Smith watercolors. I have them in this palette. They come in the tubes and I put them in this palette, let them dry and that's what I'm working from. I just have a flat canvas panel that I'm using. I primed it with the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. This is great when you have a surface that may have been primed for acrylic paints and you want to put watercolors on top. And I'm using my silver black velvet series 3000 brushes. I'm using a size 8, 6, and 12. And also I am having some water, which when you're watercoloring you want to have some water nearby. I always have three glasses just in case one gets super dirty while I'm working. I'm lazy and I don't want to get up and have to like rinse it out and get a new one. So I just keep three on there and that keeps me going till the end. So you can see this is how I am getting my silhouette on here. I printed that out, cut it out, and then traced around it with a watercolor pencil so those lines will dissolve as I add color and water to my canvas. Um, but this is super easy if you want to create a silhouette and you want to kind of create your flowers around it but you don't necessarily draw like I don't draw. This is kind of I guess a cheater version. Um, makes me look like I can draw but I just traced and now I'm filling it in with my watercolors. Of course I want to add some drips to the bottom of my silhouette dear and so I just tipped my canvas up and let those um, water drips fall where they will, added some more pigment and I'm just filling in this entire deer head and because um, I just wanted this kind of focal point silhouette. I had this idea in my head and um, I just thought it would be really pretty to kind of fill the canvas with some loose abstract florals around it. Um, the color that you see me using right now is indigo. It's by Daniel Smith. All of the colors I'm using today are by Daniel Smith. And I think this color is a must-have in your palette if you're new or if you have been trying the Daniel Smith watercolors. This is just such a great um, it's not a black, of course, it's indigo. It's kind of like a dark blue, almost like a blue, really dark denim, I would say. Um, so it's really great for adding shadows uh, to, you know, like shadow um, washes or glazing onto things that you've already colored and dried. It's great to add that shadow. Also, if you don't want a stark, black. Uh, this is a great one to have. You can mix it with other colors. You can, you know, like I said, you can uh, do, use it as a glaze over other colors when they've dried. It's really fun to do that. So I just really thought this color was super pretty and I was excited to get it and add it to my collection. You can see I have about five empty um, wells in my palette. So I will be deciding what Daniel Smith colors I want to add to my collection. If you're a Daniel Smith fan, you've used them and you have some suggestions, I would love to hear those. So here I go um, starting my florals. Now one of the things that I love about watercolor and about flowers in particular is that you can use your brush strokes and like the shape of your brush to create your petals. You can use it to create your leaves like I'm doing here. Um, this is this is the number 12 round brush and it is just so great. Any of the round brushes are so fabulous for creating those leaf shapes because you just start with your tip on the top of like on the very surface of your paper. Have it nice and filled with your pigment and water and then slightly Angle your brush down till it's flat onto your canvas or your paper and lift it up and you've got like the perfect leaf shape. So it's super easy. Um, I've been having a lot of fun playing with watercolors and kind of getting to know, you know, what strokes make what kind of shapes on my paper and, you know, you just kind of 
figure out and learn by trial and error. At least that's what I've been doing is learning by trial and error. Kind of like which way if you twist your brush a little bit you'll get some different kind of texture and um, leaf shapes or or petal shapes. So it's a lot of fun. I absolutely love watercolors and um, it's been really fun to kind of get out of my uh, box and try new things. So I wanted to share that with you today and here I am just making a little bit of a rose shape. Those I think are like the easiest flowers to start with because all you do is do little half circles, three or four around them depending on how big you want your rose to be and then to take some clean water and pull that pigment out and you have a beautiful rose shape. Now the technique that I'm using today basically is dry, wet on dry. So my surface is completely dry and the only time it gets wet is when I add the color to my canvas and then I will take a clean wash of water and blend all of that out. Um, but you could certainly do the same thing. You can make your same abstract floors if you wanted to do wet on wet. So maybe I'll do another video if you guys are interested in look, you know, seeing a little bit of that technique. I'd love to do that for you. Just let me know or leave a comment on the Blitzy blog letting me know that you want to see that kind of technique as well. Um, so you can see I added a few more a couple more roses so I tend to do things in threes I'm just trying to fill up my background uh, with these larger florals and now I'm going to come in and add uh, some leaf shapes some twines um, this is really one of my favorite shapes to make are these little like leaf twine shape things I just take the very tip of my paintbrush and draw a line, kind of curve it a little bit, and then again using that same stroke of just placing the tip of my uh, brush on my canvas and then flattening it, I get that really pretty leaf shape and you can see all of the different colors and variations depending on how wet my brush is of that color will be left behind. So I'm doing some more little vines here in between the antlers. As the space gets more filled, I tend to uh, make smaller uh, shapes, smaller flowers, smaller leaves. So I think I moved to a size 6. This might be a size, yeah, I think this is the size 6 round. So all of the brushes that I'm using today are the round, but you can certainly play around and try um, what kind of shapes you can get with like an oval brush or a flat tip brush. Um, I think uh, for my larger flower now that I'm thinking about it I might have had more an easier time making that shape if I would have used my round mop brush but hindsight right so I'm just filling in and that color that I used for the vines in around the um, antlers was a combination of the serpentine green and um, I think the quinacridone gold made that really pretty color. And I added a few berries or more flowers, just depending on what you want to call it, and filled it in with some of that pretty, pretty blue. Here I'm using, I think, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the color. I'll have all of the colors though listed in the Blitzy blog, you can see exactly what colors I used on this canvas and um, all of that information. So pretty much that's it. I'm just filling in the areas. Once I have this layer done, I'm going to let it dry, set it aside. I think I actually set it aside overnight, but you don't have to. You can just let it dry naturally or hit it with your heat tool and um, make sure it's completely dry before you move on to the next step, which I wanted to add a little bit more detail. So I knew the silhouette was completely dry because that had already dried earlier. And so I'm adding some more color to the inside of that. And I actually used Shadow Violet to just kind of deepen that up but not make it too, too dark. And now here I am, the flowers are completely dry and I just wanted to add a little bit more detail. So I'm coming in with Buff just to add uh, a few more, a little bit of highlight section. 
And now I'm coming in again with that same blue. This is actually called Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, which is so pretty. And I got it for no other reason than I liked the name of it. Daniel Smith uh, watercolors have some really beautiful names. And I will admit to totally buying paints because of the name. I don't know. That's probably not the way you should do it. But I like to have pretty things and pretty names make me think that it's going to be a pretty color. And so far, I have been right. So just deepening up those shadows on those flowers. And you can see I went right over the... Um, blue vines with that same color blue but I deepened it up so my my brush wasn't as wet but I had loaded up more pigment on it so I got a little bit more shading and depth and variation but you can still see the lighter uh, original leaves underneath which I think is so pretty so that's what glazing is and and you can do it with like other colors on top so you don't have to use the same color on top. You can totally go in with a completely different color and get some really beautiful glazing effects. So it's just so fun. Watercolors are so fun and you don't have to be intimidated by it. Believe me, it took me a long time to gather up the courage to kind of try to paint on my own. I definitely started off watercolors kind of like the way I start off anything with stamps and coloring in images doing fun background washes around stamped images. And then, you know, it just kind of evolves into where I wanted to try to put my own mark on things. And I started to play around and I am having an absolute blast. And I encourage all of you guys to definitely give it a try if you've been looking at watercolors. It's just such a fun medium. It's a loose medium. It's a forgiving medium. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I really love about working with watercolors. So here are some close-ups of this canvas all finished. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please subscribe to me and to Blitzy and give us both thumbs up. And for all of the supplies that I used today, you can definitely hop over to the Blitzy blog and find all of that there. For more ideas and inspiration, be sure to follow Blitzy on Facebook, Instagram, and our blog. And I will see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.